Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to a very special episode here on Rewired Radio. I'm your host, DJ Drew. And I'm Coral, your favorite event planner. And today's guest is here to show us how to choose the perfect wedding venue. So listen close because we got everything you need on the menu from budgets, catering, and booking your wedding date. All that and more. Plus, we got a sushi plate. So with no further debate, from El Dorado Park Golf Course, let's welcome Catherine Kachong. What's going on? How are you guys? Thank you for having me. Doing fantastic. We're We're excited to have you with us. Thank you. So um, I'm over at El Dorado Park Golf Course, not too far from here. Um, We're part of American Golf Corporation. Um, We are a permanent outdoor tented venue. We have a max capacity of 300 guests. Nice. And we host anything from weddings all the way to special occasions, golf tournaments, and pretty much anything else that you guys can think of. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're super excited to have you with us today. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking about how to choose the perfect venue for your wedding or for your special event. Mm-hmm. And um, Catherine, if you can actually just give us a little run through on your beautiful venue here yes. at El Dorado Park Golf Course. Yeah. So um, we are just... You know, we're like minutes away from like major freeways, like the 22, the 605, 405. And, you know, um, wow. we, it's, yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> I know. It's very pretty when it's dressed up. It's a little hard when there's, you can't, you know, a lot of people are visual, right? They want to see it like fully set up, but there's just so much flexibility with the venue. You know, um, you can make it as easygoing or as elegant and um, as you want it to be. Isn't that funny how people want to show up when they're touring venues and they want it to look like this? Right. And you're like, well, no, that's your vision. Yeah. You're supposed to make it look how you want, exactly. you know? No right or wrong. Yeah. And sometimes like when I see the photos, I'm just like, oh, wow, is that really us? Yeah. So it's really fun to see everyone's styles. And um, a lot of the times I'm kind of like, wow, I wish I did that for my wedding. <laughs> Isn't that funny too? Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It really looks like something else once you do the full makeover. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. They walk in, they see for what it is, but it's really what you can make it out to be afterwards. Right. And um, wow. like that, that was, even those string lights just add so much to it, to the look. Right. That was our very first wedding that um, very, very last minute addition. Um, the sun decided to go down that week and, you know, we had anticipated it, but we were just like, you know what, let's get some lights out there. And um, that's just what it, it looks like. And yeah. I'm so happy we did it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so fun. Yes. Upgraded chairs, always a, you know, always a good look, but absolutely not necessary too. So it just depends on budget mm-hmm. at the end of the day too. How yeah. often do they run those golf carts? How fun is that? <laughs> <laughs> Their wedding photos like, hello. I know. Everyone's That's like, be fun after, after a few drinks. Always. Like, can, I take, <laughs> can I take photos on the golf course, on the golf course or in yeah. the cart? I'm like, yes, you can. Don't worry. They probably we'll can't drive it. it after a few drinks though. <laughs> I would ride that thing the whole oh, night. Sure. Like oh. to my ceremony, to cocktail hour, to the reception. So right. the golf Down the aisle too? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, 100%. Why not? <laughs> oh, it's not like well. Cinderella theme. Yes, that was a quinceanera that we had. And um, again, this is just like our most basic setup and all everything else is ours. And all they did was add that little, you know, centerpiece. And mm-hmm. it makes such a huge difference. Totally does. Mm-hmm. So cute. I love sure. them. And then the white draping, the bistro lights, and the faux ivy that you guys see in that photo right there, um, they're permanent. So it's like less decor for you guys to have to worry about. So you oh. all have that up all the time? Yes, we do. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Yes. beautiful it really stuff. just makes the room. It really does. Adding any yeah. kind of florals or greens is going to kind of make it a little exactly. bit nicer than it already is. Right. But just having right. the white tent and the white drapes mm-hmm. really makes it nice. Yeah. It's, all, yeah. it's whatever your vision is. It, it, it works in there. So. Nice. so I'm sure everybody's different, but what is usually the most important factor when it comes to choosing a wedding venue? Is mm-hmm. it people's budget? Is it the style of the venue? Is it all inclusive? From your experience, what do you think? I'm noticing a lot of like what we can include. So um, our venue in particular, we have like in-house catering. We provide the tables, the chairs, the linens, basically all of your necessities at that point, right? And so we help alleviate a lot of that stress that you would normally have if you were trying to book multiple vendors. So for us, like the only other vendor that you would really need to look for is a florist and a DJ. We take care of the rest. Exactly. <laughs> Bummer. <show> again. <laughs> <laughs> so it just depends on what you what you need. And mm-hmm. I've seen weddings where 
they have taken what we have and added so much more to it or weddings that just keep exactly what we have and do the bare minimum and looks great either way. Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, you know, and obviously that has a lot to have included with the venue. Right. But when you have couples that are calling you and they want a certain date to book your venue, mm-hmm. we've already talked about it on the show a couple times, yeah. but there's these special dates every year that right. pop up. And this year was 22222 mm-hmm. and more recently 111122, which mm-hmm. was randomly what during the week. Yeah. Which so people Friday, say, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, Friday's yeah. not too bad, but people still want to get married on these special dates. Okay. So let's say they call and you're like, oh, we already booked 111122, mm-hmm. 11, I'm so sorry what advice do you kind of tell them? Do you say find another venue or do you give them another option? Well, of course, like I have to break the bad news. I'll be like, hey, (laughs) I don't have the date anymore, but um, let me show you what you can do if you move to this state or this state. And then it kind of opens their eyes and be like, oh, that's a little bit more budget friendly or um, even switching the month altogether. And you may have lost the date that you really wanted, but then now you have more um, budget for something else that you really wanted to do so it just right. depends on what you want to do in the end too totally mm-hmm. and at least you give them that option like you know what I'm so sorry but we don't have this date right but we have this date and it's actually cheaper for you so you kind of give them that exactly. choice um, but let's say they're still really fixated on the date but they're a planner mm-hmm. and they know this two years in advance they mm-hmm. that they want to get married on 11 11 22 how far in advance should they book a venue I mean every venue is so different right like um some venues the demand is very like it's very much there they may be booked out like a year and a half out and there's nothing you can do about it right but for us like um sometimes you'll get really lucky if you call and be like hey that date's still available a lot of people get super excited and um but i would say like a year year and a half out at least like on average yeah probably minimum right right especially nowadays i feel like People want to get married. Like, let's say they just got engaged in December around Christmas time. Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, let's get married next summer. You're like, ah. Uh, yeah, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could. You, you could. just want to, you know. You want to plan for it, especially now that weddings are a lot more popular after the pandemic and right. everything. But, hey, if you have an aunt that has a beautiful backyard, you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you want to get married in five months, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's not a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, as you mentioned, you know, you have other options. Like, even a Thursday mm-hmm. right. might be more cost effective. Mm-hmm. I mean, some venues, they have, like, different requirements, right? Um, but you can see that the requirements for a Thursday is so much less in, in comparison to a yeah, Saturday. Yeah, it's less in demand. Mm-hmm. Right. But then, and more dates are open. And then, if you think about it, if you can get your people to come and give them enough of a heads up, then they could have a Thursday or Friday wedding. And then you can leave that Saturday, Sunday for more wedding-related events and more time with your people. Sure. As totally. well too. They're already there. Yeah. And I Make, feel like... Thursdays are becoming a more popular they day are, yeah. lately. I mean, I've got mm-hmm. a few Thursday weddings booked next year. So I know people come out. Right. I mean, they'll still come out on a third. Look, if you got food, <laughs> drinks, and entertainment, I'll people will show up. That's yes. free. You yeah, have to include free. that. But like, yeah. They'll show up. It doesn't matter what day of the week it is. Right. Totally. You know? But your venue is obviously very beautiful. Um, you. As you mentioned, it, it can house up to 300 guests. Yes. It's exquisite mm-hmm. catering. The works, basically. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a perfect place to have a big party. So for anyone out there who is planning a big wedding, what are the pros and what are perhaps some of the cons Mm -hmm. of having such a big event? Of course. I mean, it's all like it's all fun games, right? You you want to invite everybody that, you know, it's 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 a really exciting time to plan everything out. But of course, it is very pricey, especially with pricing right now. but you just have to be cautious of how many people you invite and when you submit your final head counts because you don't want to pay for something that somebody's not going to utilize, right? Mm-hmm. So, but when you have a high guest count, there's just more to consider, like more more food, more florals, more decor, just a little bit more. More of expensive. Everything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So. And also you run the risk of a lot of those people not showing up. Exactly. And that's money down the drain. Right. <clears throat> my worst experience. nightmare. Right. Oh, Personal experience. <laughs> same. Same. Yes. Uh, but you know what can you do? You just right. can laugh about it. Yes. We could laugh about it on a podcast you can send years them a later. Bill. <laughs> I almost did. <laughs> yeah. Right. Totally. Well, you showed us all those beautiful photos in the mm-hmm. beginning. And I'm super curious as a planner and designer myself. Sure. What have you seen that's been the most unique or that has stand out the most for ceremony and reception at right. your venue? There was a couple photos that we had shown earlier, but um, 
it was a very, very basic wedding, but all the colors were very uniform and like a lot of neutrals are very in right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, she was like a graphic designer. Um, That's like that was her job. And so she did all of her own details and each card like on the table had a little fun fact about them and like where they met or or like a question perhaps so it's just a little bit more interactive so people are like looking at stuff like that and so it kind of keeps everyone busy versus kind of like just sitting there kind of yeah. awkwardly you know i love it it's more personal yeah, exactly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm sure you've seen a lot of things that really just make everything pop out yeah Absolutely. well i like that it's like you're sitting at the table and when you're waiting for all these formalities to happen you mm-hmm. can be reading fun facts about the bride and groom and you know you could be talking to the person across from you that you might not know and say hey did you know this fun fact and it kind of right. opens conversation yeah yeah, yeah I, I do like that that's cool nice mm-hmm. and you know I've noticed that lately golf courses have become a very popular choice Mm -hmm. for weddings. I actually worked at a very luxurious five-star resort back in the day, and we used to have very nice ballrooms and also some very, very nice courtyards outside for the ceremony. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that a lot of couples still chose to have their wedding or their ceremony, at least, outside Mm -hmm. on the golf course. So from your experience, why do you think they're such a popular choice? I would say probably aesthetics, right? There's less maintenance. It's already very, you know, beautiful alone. And it's just very minimal, like, you know, put some petals on the ground, um, decorate your arbor um, as you need to. And it's just very simple. And then, you know, for our venue in particular, like the ceremony site is just steps away. So once you're done with your ceremony, it's just straight to cocktail hour and everything's already ready to go. So it's more of like the convenience factor that we try to you know, show you guys and make your life a lot easier. And less maintenance, too. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I mean, less work is always nice, right? Mm-hmm. You don't right. have to eat too, so much decorations. Yeah, right. totally. Well, and speaking about decorations, sometimes people hire – I actually just had this. It was crazy. People hire other people to come and decorate. Mm-hmm. Not your florist, not your wedding planner. Decorators. Did you know that was a thing? No. So I feel like when you're at a golf course, you really don't have to have that because you just have your florist and – your view is literally the golf course and you don't need all of these decorations. Obviously when you go into reception, but then your venue, you have those things that are already up at the top. Right. And so it's like, okay, like now we just need flowers for the table and maybe some fancy chairs and we're good. Exactly. And, you know, speaking about other vendors, which I feel like I already know the answer (laughs) to this, but do you always refer your preferred vendor list or do you recommend just they kind of bring in whoever they want? I mean... Obviously, perfect world for me, like our preferred vendors list, right? Because I know that they know what our expectations are and, you know, um, and they're licensed, they're insured, you know, all the all the works, basically. But um, it does depend on if that vendor can provide whatever you guys are looking for. If not, you know, then it's okay. You can you are more than welcome to bring in your own vendors. So at least we're flexible in that sense that you guys can bring whoever you want. But that preferred vendor list is there to help you kind of make that search a little bit less tedious. Mm -hmm. And um, you can kind of piggyback on their work and try to see what you what you like and what you don't like. Right. Yeah. Which Mm -hmm. is so true, because a lot of the times, obviously, getting engaged and getting married, that's the first time for a lot of people. And they have no idea Mm -hmm. other than what they just saw on Instagram. And most of the time they start with their venue. And so having this list to give these couples is super convenient because they're like, who am I going to hire for photography or who am I going to get a DJ? Like, I don't know, you know, so giving them that list actually is super helpful and makes your job easier if they do hire them. Absolutely. And it already puts trust for the clients in the vendor, Mm -hmm. the fact that you refer them. Yeah. So I'm sure you've probably seen, seen it all. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're on the inside, you're the director of event sales. Mm -hmm. So for anyone out there who hasn't booked a venue before planning a wedding, Um, What's something that you see on the inside that someone on the outside might overlook? Mm -hmm. And if you can give them a reminder of how crucial it is, what would that be? I mean, every venue operates so differently, right? Like for us, we operate with a food and beverage minimum. And a lot of people tend to get confused on how you're supposed to meet that particular minimum. So I have to educate them on how to get there. Um, what they can do if they're not anywhere near it, or I try to move them to a different date. There's other venues um, that you can rent out the whole entire venue, but then you have to bring in everything else on your own. So it just depends. Like 
um, I prefer ours just because I'm probably biased. I work there. <laughs> but we include so much already for you. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sure that makes like a world of a difference. Totally. But, the fact that it's all um, inclusive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Read your contracts well. Um, know if you um, have any refunds, like what, how you're supposed to manage your vendors, you know, stuff like that. And is that different for everyone, like refunds? I would say so. So yes. depending on the terms, I'm sure that mm-hmm. you're able to get full refund or no refunds that's something they should probably look at on the contract Definitely. right refunds postponements i mean you know it's life you know things will change you might need to change your date but you know there's always going to be like let's say we touched on booking like a really popular date right but then something happened in life and that you had to change it and then there's always going to be some type of you know thing that you have to go through with your venue to see if you can change the date or not so um, just read all of those very carefully. Read the fine print. Read the yes, fine print, definitely. folks. <laughs> that has been very, very insightful. And we want to thank you just for giving us, you know, your knowledge and experience. And before we let you go, we want to put your knowledge of golf to the test. Oh, no. So we have of a golf. fun little game. That's right. We're going to do a little golf trivia. Mm-hmm. It's actually Nothing called better. Sushi and Golf. Oh, no. <laughs> So we're going to test your golf trivia here. Okay. So. Is this when we get to eat the sushi that's well, been staring at she us? She might get to eat the sushi. So here's the <laughs> rules. So, Catherine, you have a 50-50 shot of getting the right answer. You guess the right answer, you eat a roll of sushi, which I hear is your favorite food, by the way. Yes, it is. <laughs> So you get the right answer, you eat a sushi roll, However, if you get the wrong answer, dun, dun, dun. you got to take a <laughs> little bite of wasabi. Boo. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Which, as we all know, tastes so good. It's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready for him to be like, it tastes so bad. And I was like, wait a second. <laughs> so, again, you got a 50-50 shot okay. of getting the right answer. You want to play? Yes. Let's do it. All right. Here we go. First question. In which of golf's major tournaments is the winner presented with a green jacket? Is it A, the U.S. Open, or B, the Masters? I really hope I can keep my job after this. I, wanna go, <laughs> I really want to go with B. The Masters? Yes. Let's find out. It is okay. indeed the Masters. <laughs> Good job. I was going to get A, so wasabi for me. <laughs> Coral's got to eat the whole wasabi. So you get a sushi roll. All right, here we go. Next one. Tiger Woods became a professional golfer in what year? Was it A, 1997, or B, 2002? 50-50 chance, really. (laughs) Do you know? (laughs) No. Are you phoning a friend? (laughs) I wish I could. Um, Don't phone Coral, though. I don't think she knows the answer. Mm -mm. Oh, my gosh. Uh, is know. it 97? Let's find out. It is indeed Ooh. 1997. <laughs> that was good. That's two rolls. Wow, he is old. Good guess. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Next one. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. This math? one might be a little tricky. Yep. Some math involved in this one. What is the maximum weight of a golf ball in order to compete in a professional tournament? Is it A, 1.62 ounces or B, 2.1 ounces? Oh, professional tournament. Mm-hmm. We're all exercising our golf knowledge right now. Can I phone a friend? All my friends play golf except for me. Do they really? <laughs> oh, yeah, all eight of them. Give her a number. <laughs> 714. <laughs> what do you think, Catherine? I'm going to go with B. You're going to go with B? Yeah. 2.1? I have, I have no idea. Let's find out. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's do the wasabi now then. I the answer was 1.62. So unfortunately, you're going to have to take a little bite of that wasabi. But hey, you got two out of three so far. So let's see this. Oh my gosh. Just take a Just little, take a little bite. bite of that wasabi. It's so good and fresh. You would like wasabi. Actually, I do like spicy stuff, but this just is different. It hits the throat. You a are different. a champ for taking Oh my gosh, this look at that. that. That's, oh, that's big. <laughs> that's good. Okay. 
Woo! <laughs> on the lips and everything. Oh my gosh. Woo! Is it yummy? She goes, mm. <laughs> <So> good. <laughs> <laughs> Drink right. some rosé to wash <laughs> know, that right? down. <laughs> All right. Next one. All right. What is the maximum number of golf clubs allowed in a golf bag? Is it A, 13, or B, 14? so close to each other? Yeah, I know. A? <laughs> A, 13? Let's find out. I'm going to say B. Oh, my oh. gosh. Unfortunately, it was 14, so. She liked, she liked the she wasabi. She liked the wasabi she so much, she wanted another bite. <laughs> I know, right? That wasn't fair. Those were too close. They were close. That's I know. the whole point. I know. You want her to eat the wasabi. Okay. We got one more. So you got two out of four so far. So 50-50. Okay. So this is the determining which question is an right F. here. <laughs> here we go. In oh. which Adam Sandler movie does he play a rejected golf player turned professional golfer? Rejected hockey player. Right. A rejected he, hockey player. Golf player. Turned professional golfer. Is it A, Happy Gilmore? Or B, the water boy. Ask her. Do you know it? Well, I don't <laughs> want to be wrong. You can't guess. Oh, I can't. She's got to guess. Have you seen either of those movies? It's been a while since I've seen Water Boy, but I'm not too sure about Happy Gilmore. Have you seen Happy Gilmore? I don't think so. Well, you got a 50 50 shot. <laughs> hey, now. I was going to go with A. <laughs> A, Happy Gilmore? Yeah. Watch me be wrong. <laughs> Let's see. Cora, what do you say? I say A because I've seen Waterboy a million times and he becomes a professional football player from being a Waterboy. So I'm assuming Happy Gilmore. Yeah. That okay. is correct. <laughs> oh, is Happy Sandler. Gilmore. You that like movie, Adam Sandler. You bring him. That movie <laughs> is a classic, by the way. My gosh. If you haven't seen it, hilarious. Waterboy is better. Waterboy is great. Yeah. Old Adam Sandler movies. Just, oh, you can't beat him. Totally. If you're feeling sad, you just, oh, Big Daddy, that's a good one. All Mr. Movies, Deeds. Mr. Deeds yeah. is great, too. Man, he had some classics. We need back an in the episode day. where we just talk about Adam. We should bring him movies. on the show. <laughs> well, hey, you got three out of five. <laughs> Not too bad. You get a whole plate of sushi all for yourself. So I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> Thank you. So before we wrap it up, as you know, the guest of honor makes a toast on the show. So if you'll please do the honors. Okay. Um, a toast to my first podcast and a good to uh, a great start to 2023. Yes. Cheers to that. Oh my gosh, we're your first podcast. <laughs> we usually are for a lot of people, I but know, hey. Right? Cheers to that. Why, well, thank you again, Catherine, you. for being on the show. We wish you much success in 2023. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be working with you in the future. Sounds Until good. then, folks, stay tuned for our next episode. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. Cheers.